What's up, people? Let's do something fun today, shall we? I saw a video on one of my favorite channels, 8-Bit Show and Tell by Mr. Robin, where he actually ported a text adventure game from the ZX80 to the VIC-20. Now, the special thing about this adventure game is it's only 10 lines, okay? Um, the game was adapted from the one-line cave adventure originally developed by Digital Prawn and Ian R. Salkis for the ZX Spectrum in 2007, okay? Uh, the original game was already very small, even so it was quite challenging to port it to the ZX81 in 10 lines of code, mainly because the ZX81 only accepts a single instruction per command line, okay? Even worse, due to the line length restrictions in this category, the instruction responsible for the main game logic had to be broken into three separate lines, which means the entire game had to be intimate had to be implemented using eight instructions only. So the main solution was concatenating the entire game state into a single string variable, xString, and modeling the game logic as a finite state machine such that a single formula updates the entire game state at once in a single instruction based on player movement and action. Okay, the core game logic is assisted by another two formulas uh, the first formula validates and calculates player movement based on player input and current location. Execute in a singles instruction. The second formula validates and calculates player action based on player input, current location, game state, executed in a single instruction. So basically, the backstory of the game is, it's called Ten Liner Cave Adventure, by the way. Um, the backstory is, as a young warrior apprentice, you have been chosen by the village elders to seek out the evil menace that lurks in some nearby caves. Once found, use any means at your disposal to defeat it. Good luck on your quest. Okay, so in 10 lines, it recognizes the following commands. North, South, East, West, Inventory, Look, Look at an object, Get an object, Open an object, Kill an object. So basically, the game was created for the basic 10 liners 2016 competition um, organized by Homeputerium in Germany. Uh, the competition was design, was to design games in uh, interpreted basic for any 8-bit platform, restricted to 10 lines of code, um, and it actually uh, it was the first ZX81 game to ever qualify for this competition. Not an easy task. So Robin over at 8 Bit Show and Tell, I'm going to put down in the description the link to his video where he ported the game to the VIC 20 and the challenges he had. We're going to piggyback off his success, use some of the techniques that he used, but we also have to make some changes because today we're going to port it to the Atari 8 Bit 130XE. All right, so let's take a look at the game, let's play the game. And then let's take a look at the code and I'll explain to you some of the changes that I had to make in order to fit it in 10 lines of code on the Atari. So let's play the game and then I'll show you how I did it. All right, so I've got the game loaded in memory. Let's go ahead and list the source code. And let's run it. Actually, let's clear the screen and run it. You are in a cave. Hmm. Look, nothing. You are in a cave. East, cannot do. West, cannot do. South, cannot do. North, you walk. You are in a hall. A dragon. Hmm. I don't think we have what we need to kill that dragon right now. So let's go east. You walk, you are in a pit. Look. Chest. Look. Chest. Closed. Open chest. Cannot do. You are in a pit. Let's go north. You walk, you are in a lake. Look. A corpse. Look. Corpse. Key. Get key. Taken. Let's do an inventory. 
Now we have a key. Sal, you are in a pit. Look. Chest. Open chest. Opened. Look chest. A sword. Get sword. Taken. Inventory. A sword. Let's go back west. You were in a hall. Look. A dragon. Kill dragon. You won. Well, there you go. Now, obviously, I played this game <laughs> a few times, and I also watched the the uh, 8-bit show and tell video, so I kind of figured out the map pretty quickly. But as you can see, quite a bit of gameplay um, packed into 10 lines of code. It's pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and dissect the code and see how this works. Okay, so here we're at the console, the Atari 130XE, and we've got the code already loaded. As you can see, we've got 10 lines of code, and there's a lot going on in each of those lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with listing line by line, and then we're going to talk about you know what we did from that original code to make it work on the Atari. So the first line of the original code for the ZX81 is a let x string equal 100 and then a bunch of words. Now, one thing to really notice in this, this code, as was described in the, uh, the original video, is that these first three characters, which are blank in my code because I'm not using them, the first three characters uh, had a, it, there was a 100 there to start off with, okay? And what that represented was the first character here, the one, was the room number you were in. The second character, was whether the chest was open or closed in the game and the third character was whatever inventory you had so it was a very clever way as was described in the original video of how to keep track of the um, the uh, you know the, the counters in the game so to speak but we're not going to use those so I basically uh, blanked those out but I left the space there as to not you know ruin any of the calculations later on in the game but the other thing you have to notice is that each one of these 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 clauses, like cannot do, cannot do, you walk, opened, closed, each one of these are exactly nine characters in length. And that's very important for the calculations that happen in the game. So if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that's the first clause. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, second clause, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, third clause. So when you see the, the odd spacing in between these words, you un, you'll understand why it's important to have exactly nine characters in each one of those clauses. And I remember when I originally was trying to port this game and I typed in the text from the original code, I was missing a space here and there and nothing was working properly as far as my text display. So I had to really go back in and make sure that I had the three in the beginning and then each clause was nine characters. So... The other difference on the Atari is that all strings must be dimensioned, dimensioned with the dim keyword before you use them. Whereas on the original ZX81 code, um, you could just assi start assigning the, um, the text right to the variable without dimensioning. But on the Atari, you have to dimension it. So I had to do a dim X string. I, I used 150 characters. It's probably a little less than that, but I did 150 to be safe. And then we put the colon. And we went ahead and signed the text to that variable. Now, if you look in the original code, you'll see that the, the text, um, uh, well, actually, no, no. In the original code, it's exactly as you see it on the first line. So that's fine. So let's go ahead and let's now list line two. Now, in line two, what you'll see here is those original three characters that I'm no, not using in the Atari ported version of this program, those are now going to be converted into variables, R, C, and I. And let me explain why I did that. So we still have to keep track of what room you're in. We still have to keep track of whether the chest is open or not. And we still need to keep track of your inventory. So I decided to use R for inventory. There's your one. C is the chest open or closed, zero, one, and inventory, you know, as, a, as an integer, zero through whatever, for whatever items you pick up, okay? Now, we also had to dimension, dimension some other strings, which you'll see that we're going to be using in the next few lines. Uh, 
The U string is actually the user input string. That's the command that they're going to be typing in every time they make a move or take an action. Um, the L string is also used um, later on in the program. We'll talk about that as well. And um, the other thing that I did here is the original X string, which by the way, that first line took up more characters than you can normally type on an Atari. But since I did not use the space in the beginning, I, um, I abbreviated the DIM keyword. I was able to actually fit more than the 120 character limit uh, on that first line. But in any event, I'm appending to that original X string here, the words taken, space, you died, space, you won. You'll see in the original source code for the ZX81, um, they use this text at the end as they're printing your status each time you make a move or take an action. And I'm assuming they put that at the end of the code because they couldn't fit it on the original line in the, in the ZX81. But I decided to go ahead and append it to the X string so I have all the text in one string called X string. And we'll talk a little, bit, a little bit more about that when we get to the end. Now, one thing you'll notice on the Atari, the Atari doesn't allow you to concatenate strings with the plus sign, okay? Um, like you can on some of the other platforms. So what you have to do in order to append a string to an existing string on the Atari is you actually have to reference the string, open parentheses, take the length of the string, which is the len function, len x string, add one to it, which says take the current length of x string, add one to it, and then assign whatever you're going to add to that string. So that's how you concatenate or add to an existing string in Atari. You reference the string, you grab the length of it plus one, and then you assign whatever you want to add to it, and that gives you the additional um, text to that string. So now we've got line number one knocked out, line number two knocked out. Let's go ahead and talk about line number three. Okay, so let's list line three. Now line three is a fairly um, simple port. However, on the original ZX81, they only had, if you look at the original source code, they only had the input from the user, input use string. One thing that was mentioned in the original video by 8-Bit Show and Tell is that the ZX, ZX81 could only have one statement per line. Well, we can take advantage of the fact of on the Atari, you can have multiple statements per line separated by a colon. So we're gonna pack some more items onto line three that were in different line numbers on the original ZX81. For example, L string, which is actually uh, what we're gonna use to store some additional text that the, the game uses. For example, cave, pit, hall, and lake. This is another one of those examples where the, the original programmer cleverly packed text into a string where he can reference the different words in the string by their position. You'll notice that each one of these phrases, cave is four characters, a pit with a space is four characters, hall, four characters, lake, four characters. This is how we're able to later on print you are in a, either a cave, a pit, a hall, or a lake, by referencing the L string, whatever room your number you're in, times four minus three, which basically puts us in whatever position, um, depending on the room number in, to tell you where you are, okay? And once again, on the Atari, when you reference strings, you've got to give it the starting position and then how many characters you're going to be displaying. There's no mid-string function on the Atari. You basically reference the string number with subscripts, starting character, number of characters. So what we're doing on line three is we're assigning L string to those locations, and then we're printing out you are in A, wherever you are, and then we're grabbing your input string. So that's a really easy line. Um, and all that's really doing is telling you where you are, and it's asking you for your input. So line three is pretty much done, and that was easy to convert. So let's go ahead and take a look at line number four next. So line number four, let's take a quick look at the original code. Uh, they're using a variable m 
an M is almost like your movement. It's a state tracker. Um, basically, it, it, it determines whether you're moving north, south, east, or west. And this is a, a calculation that was fairly straightforward. The only difference is if you look on the original code, you'll notice it says let M equal two times, and then it's checking to see if your command is north, and then it's multiplying X string subscript one. Remember, in the original code, the first three characters uh, represented your the room number you're in, the chest being open or closed, and the inventory number three. So obviously we're not referencing the the individual um, room number from the string anymore. We've got our own variable here that we decided to use called R for room number. So instead of comparing a string to a three, we're going to compare our room number integer to the number three. Okay, so this saved us a lot of effort because on the Atari, what we would have to have done is we would have had to have, we, we would have had to have done something like you know x string subscript one like that. Okay, and obviously that's a lot more characters than you know actually would be x string subscript one. Uh, less than and then our quotation three close quotation now it's definitely a lot more efficient in order to go R less than three it's probably a faster calculation it's also using less characters which is allowing us to cram more information more text per line than if we were to have to use string variables and string calculations, okay? So in the Atari, it's just more efficient to use integers um, than to use the, the substrings, like it was done in the original Z81, okay? So I just wanted to point that out. Using strings in the Atari is not great. It's not horrible, but it's not great. Okay, so this line number is basically determining whether you're typing north, south, east, or west. And basically we did room number calculations as integers, uh, as you can see throughout the line, instead of doing the substrings. So that was a pretty straightforward conversion for line number four. So let's go ahead and look at line number five next. So here we go, line number five. Now line number five um, was kind of interesting in the fact that it's, it's kind of like line number four. We're using a different variable here called A. And A is almost like a state, finite state variable. Uh, state machine that's basically going to determine where you are in the game and what type of actions you perform. Uh, so once again here, if you look at the original line five, um, what they were doing is they were determining whether you were looking at the chest or killing the dragon. Uh, and what they were doing is if you look at line five, you'll see where they're using X string subscript one plus U string, which basically means room number plus what you type. And then they're comparing that in the, in the first line uh, or the first section of five to the quotation to the number two in the look chest. So it's a way of them looking at the room number and the action you typed by strings. So what we've done here is we've decided, again, we're going to use our integers. We're going to say um, room number is equal to two. So if you're room number two and you type look chest. So again, we've taken and shortened what was normally a string function down to an integer function. Does everybody see that? And also, since we have the chest integer here as a, as a, uh, a variable integer, uh, we, don't long, we no longer have to use the val command to grab the value of a string like they were using in the original ZX. So again, a little faster, a little more condensed. Um, and the only trade-off is you have to you have to assign you have to set up those variables initially, which takes a little bit of text in the line, but it wasn't a big deal. So this took care of line five, another pretty straightforward port. Uh, not much of a change in code other than we're dealing with integer variables instead of string variables. So that that does it for line five. Let's move on to line six. Line six, kind of the same routine. We're basically using integers for the room numbers and the inventory instead of comparing strings on the original. And this handles the inventory command and the look corpse command. Again, another straightforward conversion. Uh, easy peasy, no big deal there. 
let's go ahead and move on to line number seven. All right, so let's pull up line number seven. Now over here in line seven, um, I took a little hint from Robin's uh, code when he ported this game over to the VIC-20. He basically packed into one variable B, which I decided to keep. Um, it's almost like uh, a numerical value that, that represents the room number you're in, whether the chest is open or closed, and your inventory as one value. And that got away from us having to deal with, as like in the original ZX81, where we were looking at uh, a string value of a command tied with your room number, your chest being open or closed, and your inventory together. Again, integer math versus dealing with string uh, equality checking. Um, this solution really is nice and it allows us to check the room, the chest, and the inventory with one integer and compare it also with whatever command you're typing. For example, get key, open chest, and get the sword. A really nice, clean way of putting that logic together in the same line and not having to deal with all the string comparisons, which, to be honest, is quite easy to do, apparently, on the ZX81, but it's it would take a lot more um, uh, characters to be able to perform that same equality checking or calculation uh, on the Atari. And in order to make this fit on the line, we've got to keep our characters uh, below 120, and this is how I was barely able to do it uh, using this, this method that he came up with. So that took care of line number seven, which is pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and look at line number eight. All right, let's pull up line number eight. So basically, this is our, our room number uh, chest integer slash inventory updater line. This is the line that's going to update our room number as we move throughout the, um, the map. It's going to update our chest, whether it's open or closed, and it's going to update our inventory based on some simple math calculations on the state of, the, of where we are in the game. Again, this one was on the original ZX80. If you look at it, it's a, it's a string that's, that's being parsed through, and they're taking the values of the strings and performing math on them, and then building it back into the beginning of the X string. So something easy to do on the ZX81, something that would require a lot of string manipulation on the Atari 8-bit, and it just, it's a lot cleaner and it's a lot easier to understand, in my opinion, uh, using the integers uh, and it's a lot more efficient and cleaner that way. So that takes care of line number eight. Let's go ahead and look at line number nine. Okay, so line number nine. This is where we actually print out um, your current status, um, where you are in the game, and any messages, whether you've died or you've won. This is where it all happens right here. So basically line nine, if you look at the original ZX81, they were doing some print tab, USR 386, like they did throughout the other um, code. And that allows the ZX81 to scroll or move the cursor from what I understand. Uh, apparently the ZX ZX81 didn't have any scrolling built into it, so you had to use those special uh, features to do that. But in our case, we're printing the greater than sign, a space, and uh, your last command, we're repeating it, and then we're printing whatever status message that we get out of the original X string as to, um, you know, you're in a room, you're in a pit, you're in a lake, whatever the case may be. This calculation here grabs from X string based on the state of the machine, your action. Nine characters, as we talked about before, we're always grabbing nine characters for the phrase, and then we're adding four to get rid of the first three, because we, we left the first three spaces in the original X string, so we need to move up zero base those number of characters forward each time to take those into account before we grab our phase. And then obviously we're grabbing, you know, nine characters plus 12, which actually ends up uh, taking care of the last uh, bit of the string, whether you've taken, whether you've died, or whether you've won. So this one line right here basically prints out after we type a command where we are now and what we've taken, what we've gotten, or any any error that we've that we've made. In other words, you can't do something. So that was a fairly straightforward port 
Um, now this is the line here that I also wanted to point out in the original ZX81 you notice that they printed your command and then they printed whatever clause they want from xString but they're also appending every time live uh, to the xString on the print the words taken, you died, and you won. I took that and I put that on line two. I appended it to the original xString one time so it's always there. So in other words, if we print our xString, let me just run the game real quick and then print xString. You'll see that we have all our clauses here and we also have taken, you died, you won. So I've got all the text from the game in that xString without having to repeatedly append it each time in line nine. So that was kind of a little bit of a cleaner way of having the text all together and no confusion as to why that text is down there at the end each time. Okay, so that takes care of line nine. Let's go ahead and roll into line 10, which is the last line of the program. And this basically says if the state of our machine is less than 11, which numerically 11 means that you've won or you died, it's going to go back to three, which basically uh, tells us where we are and asks us for our next input. All right. So it's a pretty, it was a pretty straightforward port from the ZX81 code. Um, it took me half a day to get some of the nuances worked out, the text, you know, the number of spaces in here correctly that got me at first, um, you know, figuring out what I was going to do here in, uh, you know, instead of using strings and just using the logic with the, the integers, you know, it all worked out and um, it's a pretty interesting game. I highly recommend that you, you grab this from the description and uh, type it in yourself or pay, you know, whatever you got to do, save it to a disk, load it up and then play it yourself and actually go through here and, and look at the logic. And you, there's a lot to, I've learned a lot just by porting this game to the 8-bit. So I highly recommend that you take a look at it. There you go, guys. Tiny adventure game made in 10 lines of code. I really like looking at these 10-liners uh, and I'm going to do a video on another one, a 10-liner Space Invaders game that I came across because you can learn a lot. You can really learn how to uh, tighten up your programming uh, basic techniques, how to condense your code, make it faster. And like I said, these 10-liner um, programs are great learning tools, especially when you go line by line and you see how they were able to pack so much functionality into, a, into a, such a small amount of code. So with that being said, uh, check us out on the next video. Make sure you click the like button. Make sure you subscribe. Click the little bell so you're notified anytime new videos are released. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Peace.